What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna discuss the Inhuman Season 1 episode titled Something Inhuman This Way Comes. It's a very confusing title to me. I know it's a classic comic book title, but it's quite a tongue twister. Uh, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with the Inhumans this season. and You've been warned. Let's get into it. Now, I do apologize on the lateness of this review. Typically, I try to get my Inhumans review out by Sunday. Not only did I have a lot of like personal stuff going on over the weekend. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you're probably aware of that. Uh, but this episode was just really slow to me. It was kind of boring. I mean, there were some action moments, but overall it was like drudging through the episode. Like I just found myself completely turned off by most of the stuff that was going on. Uh, I was actually checking my phone. I was supposed to be taking notes and I'm like, oh, I have to rewind that. And then I had to take the notes again. It was just, it was just a pain. So um, instead of like going through and detailing everything, I'm just going to talk about a couple things in this review and then give you guys my thoughts on what I think is really, really like it's the biggest problem uh, with the Inhumans season one. I know there's a lot, but as we've gone through the season, I've kind of discovered some stuff that sticks out to me. So let's talk a little bit about this episode. Okay, so why don't we start off with Karnak, because this episode really was pretty much about Karnak. I mean, there was other stuff going on, but he was at the core of the episode. We got a lot of information on him, some confirmations about things that we were curious about when it comes to his character. Uh, we did find out through flashbacks that Terra Genesis is, in fact, how he got his powers. We know in the comics that's not the case, but here on the show, they went the easy route. They're just like, okay, his powers came from Terra Genesis. So we know that. And the flashbacks with Karnak and Gorgon, honestly, were better than most of the stuff we've had on the show while they're in Hawaii. I'm like, can we see the show where, you know, we get these characters on Adeline doing like inhuman stuff? That would be really cool, but we get this instead. Now, I wasn't really upset this was a Karnak-centric episode because he is my favorite character on the show. I think he's the most interesting character. His powers are the most interesting. I mean, like really no one else really uses their powers. So I guess he would have the most interesting powers. Um, but yeah, just the depth of his character and how he's changed. Like he's had the most growth on the show. Like if you look back over the last few episodes, he's the only one who's really changed. And, you know, this character of Jen sort of tells him that doubt is a good thing. And, you know, that kind of sort of changes him for the better. But at the same time, doesn't really change him for the better because his powers, they're all about precision. They're all about probabilities. So if he doubts anything, it will screw up the efficiency of his powers. So although it may make him a better person, I don't necessarily think it's the best thing for his powers. Although most of the episode was really boring to me, I think it offered one of the coolest scenes we've had on the series when Karnak uses his powers to chop a bullet in half as it's moving towards him. I love this scene. I thought it was very cool. And this is where I thought, okay, Karnak's got his powers back. But then as we go through the episode, we find out that he doesn't have his powers back. It was, it was absolutely confusing here, but I did really love the scene. Now, something I didn't like from the Karnak scenes in this episode was the weird weapons montage with the dated, like, 90s music playing. It felt like something out of Blade. I, I was like, what in the world? Like, <laughs> it just felt completely out of place where he's trying out all these weapons and the music kicks in and it, it just felt so dated to me on a show that's trying so hard to be modern. And the music was kind of weird because the Inhuman soundtrack, like the weird, almost like... uh I don't know, like chill out techno soundtrack that they normally have. I like it. I think it's great for the show. And then this song comes on and it was like, what is this? What are we watching? So I, I didn't like that at all. So I have to rant just a little bit on the ridiculous crystal scenes this week. So we start out with her and the vet girl and young Sawyer from Lost. They're all talking around Lockjaw and she's like, okay, so my dog can transport. Not teleport, she says transport. I think that's what she says. I know it's not teleport. But I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. But then the, the vet girl acts like this idea of people being from the moon is so outlandish. But we know that the invasion that happened during the Avengers is something that resonated throughout the entire world. The stuff that happened with Ultron and Sokovia, that's something that resonated throughout the entire world. We know that enhanced beings exist. I mean, all these things are things that are kind of public knowledge now. So I just found it a little strange that these people seem to have an issue believing that these characters could be from somewhere else. I just, it was a little strange. And then we had probably the weirdest scene that we've had in the entire series. Something I've noticed with Inhumans is they have a weird sense of urgency. Like we are supposed to be on Earth scrambling for our lives, trying to put the royal family back together. However, there's a lot of times where the timeline doesn't always add up or things don't always make sense. We'll talk about that here in a second. But 
Uh, in this scene, <laughs> Crystal goes to the beach with young Sawyer from Lost. I don't even know his name. I, I don't really care, to be honest. Uh, but they're sitting on the beach, and it feels like a commercial or an advertisement for traveling to Hawaii. Like, he's talking about the motto and hang loose and how you can just let your cares away. And then he goes into the water, and then we get this shot of the sunset, and it kind of zooms in slowly on the sunset. And I'm like, what does this have to do with anything? Like, what does this have to do with anything that's going on in the show right now? Crystal, I, I realize she's a, a a young character in the show and she's a princess, but there has to be some sense of urgency. Like, did she just forget how important it is to find her family? And he's just like, oh, we can find your family later. How was that? E like, even in, like if this was real life and they were not in humans and they were split off from each other as a family, that's not something you would say. And then she just acts like it's not a big deal. And... It was a very weird scene. Really quick, I want to talk about my problems with the timeline on this show. Like, none of it really adds up. How long has Gorgon been running around in the forest? How many days has Karnak been with Jen and the guy that was there that, you know, the, the guy with Jen? I don't know his name either. Don't care. But Karnak with Jen at this little camp or facility, it feels like it's been a couple of days. Then we have Black Bolt, who was shipped off to prison with no identification which I feel like that should have taken a couple of days. And then Medusa's riding around on public transportation, but then we have Crystal, who can teleport places in an instant, who seems to have only been there for maybe a day or two. Like, the timeline is a little weird to me. I, I don't know, like, when they find them in the forest, when Black Bolt and Medusa find Karnak, like, how much time has actually passed? That's my question. Like, what is the timeline for the show? I assume from the beginning that all of it was taking place within, like, a couple of days. But it feels like it could have been as long as a week, maybe, maybe even a little bit longer. So Gorgon's been running around in the woods for a week. Karnak's been laying in this tent with this girl for a week, and he seems to not have cared about finding his family at all. Uh, that's that whole urgency thing I was talking about. Like, a lot of it just feels really weird. Now, talking about Black Bolt and Medusa, they're making it very hard to make, to make these characters re relatable or make us like these characters. Like, they're supposed to be the heroes of the show. Black Bolt and Medusa, we're supposed to feel for them. We're supposed to understand where they're coming from. But <laughs> with Locus and some of the stuff going on in Adeline, like, it's hard for me to see them as the good guys. There's, like, a gray area there where I don't necessarily like Maximus. I don't necessarily like Black Bolt and Medusa as people. So it's hard for me to connect, and I think that's another big problem with the show along the list of many things that has plagued in humans in this first season. And not to mention them basically using Felicity. And then we have Gorgon, who is still wearing regular pants and boots, even though he's not around anybody that would even care if he wasn't. Because the people that he met, the surfer guys that were helping him, they knew he was inhuman. He's being tracked by other inhumans. There's no reason for him to be wearing it other than budget reasons. And that's something that's plagued the whole show. We've talked about this before. It's been a big issue. Um, I still think I, I, Medusa is still one of my favorite characters on the show. I just don't know if she's very likable. You know, she's one of those characters where I like her, but I don't think she's necessarily the best person in the world. Then they have the scene where Maximus calls Locust Bracelet and Medusa's like, Black Bolt wants to have some words with you. And I'm guessing that was supposed to be a joke because we know that he can't talk. Ha ha ha, I, I guess. Um... Yeah, I mean, the thing is that Inhumans is plagued with a bunch of problems that I, at this point, I don't think they can fix. I mean, they've done just about everything they can possibly do with the show up till now, and I still feel like there's a lot of issues. So before I end this review, I want to talk about the two major things that I see as problems with the show that they just can't fix in its current state. Uh, the first one is the fact that it feels like it should be binged watched. Like, it doesn't feel like... Uh, a week by week show. It feels like it's meant to be watched back to back to back to back. And it would fit better on something like Netflix or Hulu or somewhere like that. Uh, the week to week thing within humans because of the dips and the way the, the episodes are directed and the pacing issues and things like that. Like, I honestly feel like the show should have been on Netflix, maybe with a little more money. We already know there's a bunch of budget issues with the show, but along with that, I think it would have worked better on Netflix. I feel like putting it on regular TV, it just, it, it feels sort of long-winded in, in portions, and then it feels like it speeds up in, at other times, and it doesn't have any rhyme or reason. Like, the episodes aren't formatted the way typical TV is formatted, so I think, you know, Inhuman suffers from that. 
Um, that's that's one of the other problems. The, the uh, that's one of the big problems. The other problem is the character of Orin. Now, this character is supposed to be a huge threat. The right hand woman of Maximus, the leader of his royal guard, the best of the best. Uh, her healing factor is supposed to make her very dangerous. But really, what has she done personally? I know we're going to get more of her in the next episode, but there's nothing threatening about her. Yes, she can heal, but it takes her a while to do it. Like, it looks like it takes several hours, maybe even a day to heal, which again, this adds to the whole issue with the timeline stuff. Um, but there's nothing really threatening about this character. Here we are over halfway through the season, and I still feel like, why are we afraid of her? Like, why are they running from her? Her only power is her ability to heal, but it doesn't happen instantly. So <laughs> where is the threat? And then she's followed by Mortis, who seems more like, you know, that, that co-worker you have that tries to be contrary just for the fact of being contrary. Like, that's what that character feels like. So he undermines a lot of the stuff that she does, and then sometimes he listens to her, sometimes he doesn't. And then the other side characters, just... Oren as a character being the only villain, really, because Maximus isn't perceived to me as the uh, antagonist of the show. He's the one pulling the strings, but she's doing all the groundwork. I just feel like she's weak in that department, and I think the show suffers for that. So I know I missed a few things in this episode, but honestly, I don't really care. The episode was just so boring to me. I mean, what did I miss? The stuff with Declan and Oren and then trying to like trick the royal family into coming back to the lab. The stuff in Adeline where, uh, you know, they're trying to overthrow Maximus, which he's a human. Why? Why is anyone afraid of him? He says he's got all these people helping him, but we rarely see anybody doing anything other than standing around him and calling him my king, which is just, I don't, I don't understand the threat there. Um, another thing that does bother me is we get title cards every time we change locations. Like, they want to explain some things to us like we're really stupid, like with the title cards, and then they want to leave things completely vague and open that probably need to be explained. It's... The, the direction of everything in the show is just so crazy to me. I don't get it. Um, I, I can't really think of anything else of any importance that happened. I mean, really, there was, they talked about flying back to the moon and some ship that Felicity had or something. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to give this episode a 5 out of 10. It was just... It's a 5 out of 10. There's nothing... I feel like Inhumans is just letting me down. Every single week we get a little bit more and then we come back and rubber band back to something like this. So... Uh, next week is supposed to be about Gorgon. Maybe he'll take his boots off. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's a show about people with superpowers and none of them really use their powers. Gorgon stomps like once an episode. That's all he does. <sighs> all right. So <laughs> five out of 10. What did you guys think of this week's Inhuman? Let me know in the comments below. Any complaints you have or did I totally missed the mark on this one. Was this a great episode? And I totally missed it. You got to let me know down below. All my social media links are in the info box as well as my Patreon and anything else you need to know about me. Um, if you want to become part of the Eric verse and take part in this conversation with us every single week, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like the video and leave a comment below. I love to hear from you guys. Anyway, that's it. I got to go. I can't, <laughs> I got to work on my gifted review because this is uh this left a bad taste in my mouth. Take care.